What is up everyone, Rice Lifestyle back with another video and this time I wanted to talk about how I got such a big chest. So this morning I did what any other YouTube would usually do and just wake up, pick up the camera and start vlogging and hopefully you come across some idea and I put up my Snapchat yesterday, what should I do for my latest YouTube video and a lot of people come back to me and said, Ricey can you talk about how you got your chest so big and how you are more advanced in your chest than the rest of your parts of your body. So I said I'm going to do a video, I'm going to do a workout video, I'm going to talk about the, the chest exercises that I do. Not exactly the chest exercise you have to do, but the ones I've done over the last couple of years that have really helped me transform my chest and have it the way it looks right now. So I'm going to catch us in the next one. I'm going to sit down in front of the laptop, I'm going to do a bit of editing to my workout. I'm going to talk for two or three minutes on the history in working my chest and what I do now. So catch you in the next one. I've just added the workout video from yesterday, the chest workout. I'm going to talk you through that. I'm obviously going to put that in the next clip. But I want to roll back six or seven years, whenever I was 17 years old. And I really want to talk about how I transformed my chest and how I got it so big. And I, so I was 17 years of age and I was in my leaving certain school. And I didn't really have a clue about the gym, but I knew I loved getting the pump on and I loved going into the gym and making it my second home. I started off the core leisure in Monaghan Town. It was the first ever gym that opened in, in Monaghan. It was the first ever the swimming pool. I'm not exactly sure what year, but I think the core leisure opened in 2009, 2010. And that's when myself and a couple of my other buddies started going. But I realized that I enjoyed it more so than everyone else. So I went every day after school, but I had no program, I had no idea. I used to go in, I used to see these big, massive buff bodybuilders in the gym. And they would literally be doing the bench press and I was never any good at the bench press. I always done the the assistant the assistant um, Smith press. Um, I used it as my bench, and there's absolutely no problem using the Smith press. Obviously, the bench press is far more advanced. But I started off in the Smith press whenever I was 17, and I started doing the dumbbell press. I started doing all these different compound movements for my chest, and that's all I did. I didn't work my arms. I didn't work my definitely not my legs, and I didn't work my abs. So I used to go in there every day after school, I used to jump in, I used to do dumbbell press, literally about six or seven sets of heavy dumbbell press and as I went forward I got better and better but one day I came across this massive tub of protein behind the counter in the core leisure and it was called Jumbo. I'll put a picture of it up on the screen so you can see it. There was literally so it was basically a weight gainer and I at that time was not small. I had a bit of weight on me at the time but just like any of you young people watching at the minute you don't need supplements but at that time I was stupid enough and I went mommy mommy I want to buy that jumbo protein. So mommy got it for me I think it was like 50 or 60 quid and there was literally tons and tons of carbs in it. So I was probably eating close to 3,000 calories without this weight gainer. So I started taking this and it literally added on about 1,000 calories. So after, let's say, two or three months in the gym, I was still going in, doing loads of chest, and I realized, holy shit, my chest is getting ridiculous big here. But it wasn't that defined, there was no definition. It was just, it was just massive. Like it looked as if it was really fat. I was wearing these tight t-shirts going out and I just didn't look in good shape but I knew I was really big and that's where I think the foundations of the my chest started off from because I was in a caloric surplus for so long I was building so much muscle around my chest that recently in the last year or two when I've been losing weight and cutting down the definition of the chest has been really showing so that's the one tip for young people now try and be in a caloric surplus and try and build the muscle for your chest and lay the foundations for in the older, when you're older, when you're 21 or 22 and you start cutting down, you can really see the definition because if you're trying to build muscle and you're in a deficit, then it's not really going to work. So I'm not saying go buy out, go and buy the jumbo, but just try and be in the floor surplus and build as much muscle as you can before you cut down. Try and bulk up before you cut down. Don't cut down to nothing and realize you've wasted all that time cutting and killing bulk and making muscle. So I'm going to catch you in the next one. I'm going to talk over the video that I do uh, every couple of days on the chest. So I've just sticked on the 
the video here in front of the, in front of the laptop, the workout video of yesterday. So as you can see here, first of all, I'm taking my pre-workout to get that my pre. You probably see it in Snapchat. I use it um, whenever it is. I'm really feeling low. I'm usually leg day whenever I know there's a big session coming up. But I took it yesterday because I was only out of bed and <clears throat> I'm feeling very low. I need a bit of a bit of pick me up. So we're just going into the workout now. Uh, the gym wasn't too busy, thank God, so I was able to video most of my workout, if not all of the chest workout. I always start, always warm up, that's the most important thing, always warm up, get the blood into your chest, and no matter what body part you're trim, always warm up, no matter if it's arms, legs, chest, back. So I just done, I think it was a two, two sets here of 15, uh, just a free bar and this is obviously all just the bench press and then i went in to what's that 50 kg uh, another warm-up i went for 12 reps this is the compound movement obviously the bench press always do your bench press first on the days you're working chest because you're going to be using the most of your energy on the bench press on your compound movements so i done 12 reps here uh, one set i then moved it up to I think it was 60 kg and I went for 8 reps. This isn't my working sets, these are still a warm up. I always move up the weights until I get to the desired weight that I want to lift. At the minute I'm lifting 75 kg, 5 by 5. But here I'm just warming up. I think I went for 8 reps here. So we started off with the free bar, 15 reps, 2 sets, and then one set of. 50 kg, 12 reps, and then now I'm doing 60 kg of 8 reps. And then the next clip you'll see is me going for my working sets. I didn't show all my working sets, but I showed the first two sets of it. I wanted to show you my rest times, and something that I have started doing now in the gym is leaving my phone at, at home or leaving the phone in the bag in the change room because that's something that will distract you during your you're there to train you're not there to sit in your phone so we'll see whenever after i do these five reps i'm sipping on water and i'm also timing myself so 90 seconds is how long you should be resting between each set the reason i'm going for five sets and five reps is because I'm cutting weight obviously over the last six or seven months and I want to keep my strength on compound movements and so I'm going heavy here with five sets and five reps. So I think I got the first two, three, I actually got the first four sets no problem with five reps and then the last set I just got four. You can see there I'm using the stopwatch on my Casio to make sure I am getting 90 seconds rest. So bench press is the most important chest exercise movement because you're using your triceps and you're also using your front shoulders, your your delts. So sipping of water and the most important here is controlled, control the whole movement. Don't bounce it off your chest. Take it down and just literally hit your middle chest. You don't want to be coming down towards your neck. You want to be coming just, just around where your your nipples are and just touching it not bouncing it and going straight up I think it took 90 seconds rest here to speed it up so I went and done another set of five reps comfortably and then I moved on to heavier stuff you can see now in a minute uh, what other things um, and your legs as well your feet are actually very important when you're doing your bench press because you want to have your feet you drive from your feet first of all and then move up to your chest where you get your explosiveness from this is something very good in GEA that all GEA footballers should be doing doing explosive uh, bench press driving up and exploding up here I went for one set of 80 kg I moved up to see how I get on I got four reps which was absolutely deadly I don't think I've ever got four reps of 80 kg after doing five sets and then I went to 90 kg and got one rep after doing six or seven sets to the bench, which is absolutely class for me. There's like PR because a couple of weeks ago I went and I done one rep max without doing any uh, previous sets. So if I can do one, then after six sets, I'm sure I can do plenty. 
heavier uh, before I do any. And then I went into the incline press. You see me there again doing my stopwatch, 90 seconds, no bullshit. So I got eight reps out here. Uh, it's another compound movement, incline. This is going to work your upper chest. I didn't start doing incline till about a year ago. Whenever I was younger, I didn't really do the incline because I never even never even knew it existed until I started really taking fitness seriously. This is going to really work your upper chest. If you don't use the incline, then you're going to look flabby. You're going to, your chest isn't going to look as defined. So I went for four sets here of eight. I showed you the first one. I'm going to show you the second one. I went for 27 and a half kg, which is pretty heavy at the minute for me. I started off the incline a year ago and I was rarely getting 15 kg up now and I bounced up to 27 and a half kg which is always the most important thing, you always want a progressive overload, you want to move up the weights because in that way you know you're getting stronger. So if I keep moving up the weights, especially when I'm cutting, well then it's absolutely deadly because I am building muscle even when you're cutting so it's something very hard to be done. So I'm moving up the weights. Well, at the minute, I don't know if that was a good day or if it was a free workout that helped, but I got the heavy weights up. So after this, I think I went on to cable crossovers. Yeah, cable crossovers is something that you really should do near the end of your workout. It is an isolation movement. You want to put one foot in front of you and you want to control the movement. You want to really give that squeeze at the end. It's really going to work your outer pecs. It gives you that defined look of the shape of your pec after doing your compound movements. Go between 8 and 12 reps here. Um, I think it went 4 sets of 12. Uh, I think it was 18.5 kg either side. So that's something that I always work on. I only showed you one set here. And then I went on to something like a finisher. I don't want to talk too long so I speeded this up. It's a finisher. It's, it's a leverage chest press that I always use at the end of my chest workout. I always go for uh, heavy, but between eight reps and 12, and then I lower the weight. And this is kind of my finisher to really get the blood literally gushing around the chest. And I think I done like four or five sets here. I'm gonna show you two. I also do some half reps and then full reps as well. I think I done on this. So this is like a finisher, this is basically to pump out all the blood and to really finish your chest after doing all the heavy compound and all the isolation movements. So there's four exercises that I do every single day I work my chest, no matter what. I will throw in some variations like throw in maybe some body weight push-ups and some other things to work my chest, but these are the four that I always do no matter what. So if you're in a caloric surplus or even if you're in a deficit then always do these movements because they will literally, literally always work every part of your chest. Uh, you might notice I don't do decline because I'm doing the normal flat bench and I'm also doing incline so there's no real need to do decline unless you're really really advanced and you're looking to add a uh, movement to your workout. But I don't do the decline so that was the workout finished up and I just want to say I don't know if you like these videos. If you do like them please write in the comment box down below saying it was a good video and do more of these videos. That's how I grew my chest because anybody that knows me knows I've got a big chest. So give it a thumbs up, subscribe and also follow me on Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, all of those social media accounts and I will get back to you in a couple of days with the new episode of GA Championship Prep. Race here, thank you.